All right, well, come on in. Check out SDI. So you got some shocks ready to get rebuilt. Yeah, those were dropped off this morning. So it's our little showroom. Shows, uh, you know, primarily what what we do in the past been making all of the uh, motocross parts, UTV parts. We have an e-click display that we can show people how easily you can make the shocks as soft as you want or as firm as you want in fractions of a second. You can go in, you can play with our controller, look at all our different programs, look at the different drive modes we have. Street mode, manual mode, or trail mode. Each of those settings you can go in and you can adjust independently your front and your rear compensations on how you want the shocks to be. Or you can go into our pro mode, and in pro you can go in and adjust your pitch, your roll, your turning, your throttle, your braking sensitivity to your particular driving. So how does this differ from the Raptor system? Uh, you don't get any selections on the Raptor. Basically, what, what they do is they tell you, you tell it what drive mode you want the truck to be in, and they, they have their own algorithms and how the shock should be. Now, how are the drive modes impacted by the truck's drive modes, or does that change? We don't, should, we don't affect them whatsoever. A terrain mode, so if, if you're rocky, you want softer kind of ride. Right. We have a, a street mode, so if you want more composure to keep it flatter, less body roll, that sort of stuff on the road. And then we have a, a desert mode, and desert mode is when you know you're gonna be driving it harder, faster, and it sets the shocks up accordingly. So in other words, you're unlocking three modes per drive mode. Yes. So like your standard mode, you know, mild mode, you can do three modes on top of that. Sport mode, three modes on top of that. And Baja, three modes on top of that, which is kind of impressive. Right, right? and you then each really of those modes, up. you can adjust those five parameters as well, right? So you can really dial it into your particular driving because my driving is gonna be different than your driving, different from Caesar's driving, Hector's yeah. driving. It's gonna be all different. You can also add preload to the rear, if you're telling me. Yeah, so oh, there's- that's kind of cool. Yeah, there is one more mode. We changed it on the Raptor so it's easy to get, but you can go in and adjust rear load compensation by 25, 50, 75, 100% more oh, rear load. A lot of people are gonna love that. Right. Right? So if you hook up a trailer or load up for the day, family of four, your tools, your cooler, all that kind of stuff, you just tell it how much more rear load compensation you, you need. You tow with yours, right? How does that work? I towed uh, this past weekend uh, for the Sandport show, and it just handled great. I need to get some of those clips on you. They were still sagging, so I got video of that. You need so, to get some of those clips on you. <laughs> all right, so all right, very cool. Now yeah. I think it's important to know, guys. These guys didn't just start with this system. They've been doing motorcycles, UTVs for a very long time. Fifteen years. So they have a lot of experience uh, with off-roading and what it takes to, you know, do a winning vehicle, right? Be be able to get the most out of suspension. And you guys saw the clips of the trucks. You'll understand what I mean. Watching that stock live valve truck perform was impressive. So this is our little parts department. So our daily <laughs> orders, all that sort of stuff. Hello. <laughs> then we come out into where all the milling is. We machine all our own parts. We have a screw machine, CNC's. This is our newest uh, screw machine. It's a 10 axis, three turret. So it mills simultaneously X, Y, Z. Most of our stuff is bar fed, which makes everything a lot faster, simpler. But on this side of the house, we actually go in loading in the chuck, each chuck at a time. So we just got this Hyundai in that'll do up to a four inch shock body. So are you guys gonna be doing a Raptor shock body at some point? Not sure. We make crossover rings. We make all kinds of stuff that everybody else uses, uh -huh. but we make it for them. So there's a lot of companies that we make parts for. That's good to know. Look at the size of that. Don't be looking at that. <laughs> Can't show you all our secrets. So one of our screw machines, bar fed, this will spit one out every like 30 seconds or something. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Fully automated? Fully automated. That's awesome. So we feed the bars in and the bar fed Peter brings it in, it mills it. And it just picks it up. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. I love this side of the house. We have a dyno room. One of our dynos. How does a dyno room work for shots? So what we'll get one on here in a little bit for you guys. Yeah, that'd be cool. And then we can show you how we can control control the live valve. We have programs written in here where it cycles the shock at a certain rate, you know, stiff, soft, all that. And then we can control the live valve and make it change its valving to see how it affects the, the valving shims that we put in it. So is this how you guys make the back end stay flat, right? Yeah, part of it. We, we can show you all kinds of di different dyno curves, whether it's a, a single live valve, a dual live valve out of the new Can-Am shocks. We can show you all that. And this is too where you guys do all your rebuilding, right? Yeah, you well, guys, part of it. This is one room. So we have multiple rooms to do rebuilds. I see Walker Evans stuff here. You guys do Walker Evans? We do a lot of Walker Evans. Here's our more of our milling operations department. They go in, we have 3D scanners, all that kind of stuff inside that we can go in and see what parts. Okay, cool. If we're trying to check a part or anything, we do shock shafts. 
for snowmobiles. Oh, can you guys build me a shock shaft of mine? <laughs> Fox says it's gonna be three right. months out. So this is where basically SDI started. When 15 years ago, when Dan figured out that it was better to start making parts than it was to buy it, these were our first machines that he bought. And so we've been running these things hard for 15 years, rebuilding them, reusing them. And this is our more or less our like our prototype room now. Is that a CRT monitor on that thing? It is. That's how old these are. Wow, dude. I'm surprised it even has a monitor. Yes. Uh, the in old here, old school machines. In here, we come in, and this is where they clean up a lot of the stuff, uh, make sure they take all the burrs off. My name's Bill. That's the man right there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the parts we're making. So Bill goes through, cleans them all up, makes sure there's no edges, no rough spots. This is a lost art, man, especially with the manual machines. Not many people know how to operate these yeah. anymore. Some more of those. Uh, Rings, different sizes. Now, are all of these for different kinds of shocks? Or yes. are some of this for some of the stuff you do on the E-Click system? Uh, a little bit of everything. We do stuff in, in here for, well, actually, this piece, believe it or not, is for a fitness machine from China. So we make them for them. We ship them to China. They put the machine together. Then they take that machine and ship it over here to, yep. to another place in California because they can't do it any cheaper than we can do it and we'd have better quality than they do what the hell <laughs> yeah, that's I got some it is man we're shipping to china now yeah we're shipping to china you don't hear a lot of companies say that no so this is our cnc screw machine side and then we have a whole other side of another building more milling another mill room so these are more so your six six fidels see we're milling in some arms trailing arms looks like for uh razor 170 i think these will end up being razor uh, clutch alignment tools. She's done with it, it'll look like that. Very cool. This is all really cool to so, see, man. As you see there, those are gonna be new top hats for a Tacoma. They need it. We're making electronics for Tacoma next. So we 3D print a lot of our parts to check fitment, all that kind of stuff. And then once we have the 3D done, we come in the mill. So this saves us so much more time. This is carbon fiber, 3D printed. <laughs> it weighs nothing. But this is a good way to prototype though, right? And see oh, absolutely. It's Make sure everything fits, no hitting, no no fitment issues. But that's cool to note. You guys are getting into adding live ops to Toyotas and all that stuff, Tacomas, right? Forerunners, yes. Yeah. We'll be doing the uh, Fords, F-250s, 350s, the Ram 2500, wow. 3500s. That is cool, uh, man. On the chopping block, we have a whole bunch of different vehicles lined up. We started with the Jeeps. The Raptors weren't first for us. So, because the Jeep, you know, they're a great vehicle, but once you lift them, they drive like crap. They drive like crap stock. What are you talking about? I own a Jeep. It's crap stock. It's crap stock. You can't even keep them straight. I'm trying to be politically correct. I'm not. <laughs> so, we started with the Jeeps. So, we got all the Jeeps done. We got the JKs, JL, JTs all done. So, then we jumped on the UTVs, the KMs, and, and the Razors because they had live valves already. Why not? And then it was like just natural progression. We jumped onto the Raptors and we're simultaneous doing the Fords. We're doing a whole bunch of vehicles all at once. We just got through putting E-Click on a Talon. <laughs> Go ahead. You can see it on the shocks. There's this controller right by the steering wheel. That is pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah. We come in here and this is our, more of our R&D area. Now, do you guys do installations too? For R&D. So we, we don't typically work on vehicles. You know, we just don't have the room. We're so busy with everything. What shops would you recommend to install your systems? That's really familiar with it right now. Well, there's a couple different ones. I have a few de local dealers here in SoCal. So you have ORW is one. You have Baja HQ OC Motorsports who were out with us this morning. So this is a new Can-Am. X3, RR, Smart Shock. This is a Caesars, is it? No, no. <laughs> so this is a fun car. So this car came from the factory with a live valve on the rebound side. So we decided let's throw a live valve on the compression side. Now we can control the compression and rebound on this shock. And it also comes with the oh shit button. It does. There's an oh shit, what do you mean oh shit button? So if you look at the steering wheel, we put a button on the steering wheel that you can, if you're off the ground or you you want to like lock your shocks for three seconds, you press the button once and the shocks are locked. I'm gonna confuse that with the, uh, you know, the radio button. Yeah, and then you can see on the Can-Ams where we put the controller on it compared to where we put it on the Honda. I like the bracket, that's a right. nice little machine and bracket. So then on, and most people are right-handed, so that's a much better spot. Yeah, this is our little corral, race cars, vehicles, test vehicles in the back that we can't really talk about. Now these are some shocks you guys are getting ready to work on? Yes, revalving them, redoing them. 
So I believe these were gone through yesterday and those are ready to go out. They're working on a set right now. We got more over here to do. We got more over there to do. We just keep now, getting shocks daily. I know you're probably not gonna answer this question, but what are you doing to the shocks to make them dance the way that truck danced in it? Cause that was beautiful to see. You know, Fox made a great shock. Honestly, I think Ford did it a lot of injustice because there's parts in the shock that need to be revalved because the valving just completely soft. It's way too soft. And then there's parts in there that are actually need to be put in the right way. So I can't really disclose what all, but- That's, uh, that's part of the secret sauce he's not gonna share <laughs> because his system is cool, okay? So I understand why not, but right. I have to ask. Cause I know you guys are asking. Right. So I think Ford did a, a whole injustice to these shocks, the way they made them valve them and put the parts in. They were trying to make them way too soft for, for Granny Jones who's driving the truck. Well, and I would say too that they, they made them too soft for certain situations, but too stiff for others. Like they, they wanted a truck that could jump, so they made it so that it went super stiff on a jump. But you take it on a regular trail, and if you get a little bit of chop, it is worse than any other vehicle. It's awful. Yeah, it's hard to make a shock do everything you want, although we get it pretty close. Well, we definitely saw that today. <laughs> so you didn't even see this room. Uh-oh, is this a secret room? This is another shock room. Ooh, another, another shock dyno. Room. So these are your so Jeep shocks, So right? these are Jeep shocks ready to go out. Now we saw these at the show, right? You were saying that these are special in a way, right? Yeah, so these are two and a half inch internally bypassed with a built-in bump zone. So we control the flow of the fluid, and once you get the, the piston comes up and goes past the bridge, it turns into automatic bump. And you can adjust these for a different size of kits. Same shock, one yeah. inch to five inch? Yeah, zero to five inch lift kit. So it's one shock body for it all. Wow. What we do is we change internal stop position on the shock. All you have to do is drop the nitrogen, pull the dust cap off, and then there's clip positions in here. You just change it in here and you can get a longer stroke. Can you order them from the, from the factory for you guys to be at a certain position? If you let us know in advance what you are, yeah, we can set it up. But otherwise, when we set them out to their dealers, they're set on the middle position, just so uh, they're for the average Joe. All right. We have a Jeep right now, one of the new, it's a 2020 Jeep. I would love to ride in your Jeep, see how that runs. We can do that, absolutely. As you see, we got a set of uh, FRSs we're doing there. Race series shocks getting redone. Yep, so all of the shocks that we make in-house, we vacuum bleed, so there's zero possibility of cavitation. Air, air is your enemy. Can we pull my truck up in here so you can bleed my, uh, my power steering system? <laughs> well, we might be able to figure out a setting. <laughs> my power steering, I got the house system, it's just loud as hell. It, yeah. Howls are, like, howls are howling. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it'll go through and you'll see one side go completely dry, the other side cycling the oil through. I think a lot of people don't realize how little travel those front ones have. <laughs> it's maybe what, seven, eight inch stroke at It's max? not a lot, yeah. But it's all about geometry. It is, it's how stiff you can make it, as yeah. fast as you want. Do you guys, I know you may not answer this, but do you guys modify the valve itself to get more nope. flow through there? We don't touch so the you, valve. So I've heard that the stock valve on these is very small, and one of the reasons why you can't get a softer ride is because it's too small. Fox made them so they have a kind of a limited range. Yeah. I don't know if it's just their design or what, but I know our valves that we make are have a wider range than they do. Okay, yeah, because that's one of the biggest complaints I've seen, because you get a lot of guys that'll remove the valve and expect the shocks to perform the same way, not on these, but like on the stocks, mm -hmm. and they're just stiff as a motherfucker. Yeah, everybody likes doing these valve deletes or live valve deletes. It makes no sense. It's a no. great shock. And then it they'll, just, put, they'll put geyser can... springs on it and wonder why their truck runs like crap. A oh, pogoing down the road. Yeah. yeah, it's too stiff. It's too stiff with the stock valving and then the spring kits, and it all goes back to how I think Ford wanted the shocks built. Yeah, so we go through, line up the shims, shim stacks, get them all ready. Are we okay to shoot this? Because this is like, you know, the secret sauce. Yeah, right? it's kind of secret saucy, but uh, <laughs> it'd be hard to figure out what size those are unless you got a micrometer up. Or they zoomed in on the spec sheet. <laughs> so this is our R&D department. You guys got more shocks. So we actually got a brand new set in that we're gonna revalve and then offer to people brand new shocks with an e-click revalved ready to go. First of all, how'd you guys get a set? <laughs> we have our connection. Nobody can get shocks right now. <laughs> yeah, they're nice and pretty. They're brandy new. Uh, right? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you see our Jeep right outside the door. So this is the bad boy that you say can now perform a Raptor. Yes, it's and it's shocks. just a two and a half inch kit with 37s. 37s? What uh, what lift kit did you go with? Uh, Curry. Did you upgrade the arms or anything like that? It's got, uh, the lower arms are upgraded, the tops are stock. It's just That's part cool. of the two inch Curry kit. Nothing spectacular. Does um, work with just about any kit or is there a limitation? It does. Uh, some kits are uh, this, 
the springs are a little too stiff for my liking. It's nicer to have a softer spring and then you can choke it in the valve. Very cool. And you said this thing will, I mean, you could just see the tires, guys. <laughs> this, this, this hasn't been rock crawling. This has been everywhere. Yeah. I drove the <laughs> crap out of this Jeep. It drives amazing. It, it, it actually yeah. amazes how amazed me how it drives. Thing has been everywhere. It, and this, it has probably thirty thousand hard miles on it, and it's a little, it? it's a twenty, the four cylinder turbo. See, we got the V six, and the V six is so gutless. I hate it. Yeah, the turbo's got a lot of pickup, we'll check but that it's out fun. Later. This is the basic hardware, right? But this yeah. kit is currently programmed for a Jeep. Yeah, this one is set up for a JT, a Gladiator. So. Little quick QR instructions on how to do it. We have YouTube videos, everything lined up, showing you how to do the installations. ECUs, any wiring harnesses that you would need, an IMU with a mount to where you, where you need to put it. So this goes onto the ECU, so you have that connector. And then this is, since it's a Gladiator, has a full body connector. And if, as you can see, we don't skimp on any of the Deutsch connectors, the sheathing, the wiring, it's all nicely done. Better than OE. And there's that little controller right there. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, so as you see on the Jeeps, we 3D print it to go on the four-wheel drive shift. That is awesome. <laughs> right? So it looks OE when you're, when you're sitting in the driver's seat looking down at it. And of course, you gotta be able to see the E-Click. Of course. That's pretty cool. That's a nice touch, man. That's attention yeah. to detail right there. Yeah, we wanna make sure that we are a step above everybody else. We're selling a premium product. We're not selling, you know, the, the starter kind of stuff for vehicles. This is definitely the people that wanna use their vehicle to the more extreme. They wanna get that extra Suspension travel and all yeah, that Yeah, suspension travel, and then the comfort ride. It's just so much nicer. What's the pricing for a kit like this for uh, the Raptor? So for the Raptor, so if you have 19 up, it is $1,800 for an electronic. What about non-live valve uh, Raptors? So 17, 18, 2100. And the difference is we are uh, providing a, a full body harness. And most of the time when you pick up the 19 shock, they don't come with solenoid. So we're also supplying solenoid, and then we're milling uh, for the guys that can't get it, the end caps as well. So we'll be making all that available huh. going forward. How much does a Jeep kit and, and also a UTV kit cost? So we have a simple three switch system on a Jeep. If you want to go soft, medium, and firm, that's 3,200, all four shock. Then you jump up to an active system where it is going through and actively adjusting as you're going, and that's 4,200. And currently it is uh, 4,900 when you go to the pro add-on menu where you can go in and adjust your pitch, your roll, your turning, your throttle. Does that include the shocks too? That includes the shocks yeah, too. Yeah, and I think that's key, right? Because the Raptors, you don't need shocks, You don't right? need For shocks. For the most part. Yeah. You know? So that's why there's a big price difference is because we're supplying two and a half inch internally bypassed shocks with far a built-in. Far better than what they come with. Yeah, and they're- Not only that, far better than what you can get for most Jeeps. Yeah, and because they're seven, eight shafts, we hard anodize inner and outer. We actually have a shock cutaway so you guys can see the quality of stuff we're making. So like I said, it's two and a half inch internally bypassed. This is a built-in bump stop. So as soon as the piston goes up past the bridge, it turns into a bump zone. The fluid is forced through here in order to make the vehicle, or make the oil go out. So. We put in a top out spring. This is that internal click position that we talked about a minute ago. So you yeah. can move that to have a longer stroke. We, so that's what holds this part right here? Yeah, so that's the bottom stop. So it'll come down and it'll stop there every single time. Oh, okay. Right. So but the higher can, the lift, the lower that goes? Yeah. So you can go in, now you can make it the next stop. Wow. That's pretty impressive, man. We, we tried to make it so it's one skew. It's like, they didn't like the fact that every time you, you bought a Jeep and you start off like, I'm only gonna do a two inch kicks. So I'm only gonna run 35s, right? Teacher proof. Right, and then you go out on the trail with your buddies and oh man, I really want now 37s and I have to go to a four inch kit. And then, oh, sh I gotta buy all new shocks. Can, you know, We decided why not make a shock that'll do everything all in one. So it'll do zero to five inch lift kit. And so you just change the stop positions and then you can add a plus one or a plus two clevis in order to compensate for more stroke. Cool. So we have one skew for a JK, one skew for a JL, one skew for a JT. And it's a good looking shock too, man, just from what you can see right there. Yeah, the hard anodized inner and outer. We make our own floating pistons so we can control the flow a lot better with the, with the polycarbonate than we can with the metal. What about the uh, UTV kits? How much do those run? Uh, so UTV, UTV kits, so if they have a live valve on there, the Dynamics or, or the new Smart Shock, I mean, it's 1800 That's not bad. It's not, no. And if you uh, need us to add live valves, it's 2600 Or if you have a Walker Evans, we make bridges to fit on all the Walker Evans aluminum body shocks. So if they're a 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, we can turn those into active 
as well. Okay. Now on the Raptors, if you wanted to get your shocks revalved and done right, mm -hmm. have you guys figured out that cost yet? Like yes. if, if I bring in a set of shocks, how much is that? So if you drop off a set of shocks with me, it's $800. $800 and you guys revalve them, re whatever, <laughs> yep. right? Which All new oils, check all the seals. If they need seals, we put seals in them. Most of the time we're getting these things right currently, they're so fresh, less than a couple hundred miles on the thing. We're not even worried about the seals because the seals are all good. Yeah, and right? that's about the cost of a proper rebuild too. So that's that's a really good price considering yeah. what you guys are actually doing to it. Yeah. And then does that count for regular shocks and race series or is there a difference between the race Same series? price. Same price? Right. So the only difference for us is going to be in the shock tuning. The, the OE shock that's not valved is one tune. Then we have a separate tune. If it's an OE shock that's revalved, I have a separate tune. And then if it's an FRS shock that's revalved, I have another tune. What about shock exchange? I know that's something you're still setting up, but that's that's something you're going to be working that's on. That's what we're looking at doing. We're trying to figure out the best way to make it easier for everybody. And I'm, we're trying to set up some dealers strategically around the country that can do it all with our secret sauce. Mm -hmm. So we'll tell them what to put in it, what fluids to use. We'll sell them the shim pack and then they'll take care of it. I think that's the challenge, right? <laughs> finding finding a shop that can do all of it. Yeah. Right? Because that's not always easy. Not all shops know how to rebuild shops. You know, no. some shops just want to swap stuff. And a lot of guys, they don't have the dyno, so they can't test it to see where it is. They have to take it out and ride it mm -hmm. and figure out if that's what they want or not. And there's too many variables when you're out doing out in the field testing not versus just the, throwing it on a dyno. Yeah, not just the trails, but the truck setup, the weight they carry, all that yeah. stuff plays plays into it. Yeah. And on yeah. Dyno, dynos don't lie. Right. So my, my shocks got revalved to the weight that I carry in the back of the bed, uh, the tires, yep. my tool, yep. my chest. So it got revalved to yep. the way that I like to ride and to the weight that I carry. Yeah, so thanks to Caesar, we actually have two different versions of, of valving for the FRSs. Thanks, Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it really does make a difference, guys. If you guys don't know, the valving is night and day difference. If you get a custom tune for your setup, the way you ride, you get that extra 10% and it just, it makes all the difference in the world. It does, it does. And uh, it's not know, cheap though. Dan, Dan is one of those kind of guys that will keep going until he's happy. Oh, if yeah. he's not happy, he, like we were supposed to have his truck for a day and he told him, no, we need it longer. So we ended up having it for like a week. Yeah. And we re re rebuilt the shocks three or four times. Three, four times. Four times. Yeah. <laughs> so I was happy and so Dan was happy. With yes. Him. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so Dan's been doing this stuff forever. KYB, Kawasaki, he's been doing shock tuning for a very long time. So he knows what it's supposed to feel like. All right, guys, that's it for the shop tour. Big thank you to Wayne and the rest of his team for letting us do a tour of the shop. It was very, very informative to me. I love doing stuff like that and seeing the behind the scenes of what goes into these shops and what else they can do. If you guys want to get a set, make sure you guys go to eclickshocks.com. They have tons of kits for tons of vehicles, and they're adding more and more every day. Stay tuned for more videos coming forward on SDI. They let us drive their Jeep, and I was thoroughly impressed with that thing, so we're going to show you that test drive. We're still going to do a side-by-side -side of the factory series shocks and show you how they stack up with the live valves and their tune. And we're going to sit down with Wayne and Dan, who's the owner of the company, to break down that slow-mo footage that we showed you guys to give you their thoughts and mine of what's going on, what we're seeing in that footage, and why the system is so great. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. All right, guys, questions and comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.